Hey everybody, it is Gordon Majak here, back with another episode of Timeless Pop, Rock, and Soul. And today I am so freaking excited for this episode that I can hardly sit still here in my chair. And here is why. Today's video, we are going to feature a collaboration of two of the absolute legends from the world of contemporary jazz. And one of these gentlemen that's part of this collaboration just happens to be one of my all-time, and I mean all-time, top 10 favorite artists. And I cannot wait to tell you who that is. Before we get to that, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below. Love it when you guys comment and appreciate all of your feedback. Now, let's get to this music, man. This one... This is such a great song, but even so much more importantly than that, these two artists and what these two artists uh, have meant to me. Let's start with the album. Now, this song first appeared on an album by this gentleman. This is the album cover. This is the great, and when I say great, that's a capital G, baby, great the legendary Joe Sample and his 1989 album, Spellbound. Uh, Joe Sample, wow. I became aware of Joe Sample for the first time in the mid-70s when he was in a band called the Crusaders. Oh, the incredible Crusaders. Uh, they originally were called the Jazz Crusaders back there in the 60s, but in the uh, 70s there, they changed it to just the Crusaders. And Joe Sample was a part of the Crusaders' legendary lineup that included these gentlemen. Uh, Joe Sample, of course, on keyboards. Uh, Wilton Felder was on sax and bass there for a while. You may remember a name of Larry Carlton on guitar. He was in the Crusaders with Joe Sample. Uh, Sticks Hooper on drums, just as tight and funky and greasy as it gets. The great Wayne Henderson on trombone, just an incredible trombonist. And then uh, later on, they added uh, Pops Popwell on bass, and Wilton Felder just uh, devoted himself exclusively to saxophone. 1974, the Crusaders did an album called Southern Comfort stone-cold, classic, epic, contemporary jazz album. They followed that up the following year in 1975, and to the best of my memory, this is when I became aware of them through my friend's older brother, with an album called Chain Reaction, another stone-cold contemporary jazz classic. These guys were on a serious roll, and it, when you remember these band members' names that I'm telling you about, I mean, this is like an all-star band, right? They followed up Chain Reaction with an album called Those Southern Nights in 76. Another freaking legendary contemporary jazz record. And they followed that one up the following year in 1977 with an album called Free as the Wind. This is four consecutive albums, folks, that if these guys were in the pop or rock vein, they'd be in the freaking Hall of Fame, okay? because they just threw down the gauntlet on four straight albums there and really, uh, in their own way, defined just how nasty and funky and ferocious and soulful contemporary jazz could be in the hands of these uh, master musicians. Now, that's where I became aware of Joe Sample. And the song, uh, as I said, is from his album in 1989. So I knew about Joe Sample back there in the mid-70s. Just the tastiest. The first word that always will come up whenever you talk about Joe Sample to anybody that knows contemporary jazz is he was the tastiest dude on keyboards you have ever heard in your life. I don't think anybody, and there were some great, great uh, keyboardists in the world of contemporary jazz, and back then especially. I mean, you think of artists like Bob James and Dave Grusin. There's some pretty legendary names that were jazz keyboardists, but I don't know if there was anybody as bad and as nasty and as soulful as Joe Sample. 
you put Joe's sample on a, a an electric piano on a Fender Rhodes, and that brother, you're getting ready to blast off into outer space. Just the tastiest keyboard playing you will ever hear. Absolute master, a legend uh, in his own right, Joe Sample, both as a member of the Crusaders, and then he had a long and very successful solo career. And that's where this record uh, that today comes from, his solo work. Now, the funny thing is, the weird thing about this is I became aware of Joe Sample, as I said back there, I think it was 75 when he was still in the Crusaders and that classic album, Chain Reaction. The following year, uh, not only did Joe Sample, as a member of the Crusaders, uh, put out the album Those Southern Nights, but all of the Crusaders, you you may re remember some of those names, guys like Larry Carlton and Wilton Felder and some of these other guys, these were very popular studio musicians as well because of how accomplished and how tasteful and how soulful and just ridiculously talented they all were. Those players all did uh, session work on the side, okay? So Larry Carlton was doing work with everybody from Steely Dan to the Crusaders to his own stuff to other artists, and it was the same in the jazz realm for uh, Joe Sample on keyboards and also for Wilton Felder. Well, that following year thereafter, I became aware of Joe Sample. Joe Sample appeared on an album by an artist that I had not heard of yet. This is now 1976 that we're talking. And that artist was this dude, the great, the one and only Michael Franks. This guy. I can't even, I could do a whole channel on Michael Franks and I'm not even joking and don't push my buttons or I might do it. I love this guy, okay? Uh, this guy is the top of the heap in, in my book. I absolutely love him as an artist. He's a fantastic singer, just a remarkable artist, an artist that has touched me very, very deeply musically. So it was Michael Frank's first album there, that his big breakthrough album in 1976, The Art of Tea. And of course, you remember Michael Frank's uh, signature song, Popsicle Toes, was on that album. That's where that song came from, Popsicle Toes, back in 1976. And also on that album were Joe Sample and Wilton Felder and Larry Carlton. And then they were on the next Michael Frank's album. And so it became immediately apparent to me that there was there's several things going on here. You just have these extraordinary musicians like a Joe Sample on keyboards at, who's doing his own career and he's in the band with the Crusaders. He's also doing session work. And then you get somebody like Michael Franks writing these just... Uh, I always say that Michael Franks is like whatever Steely Dan is to the pop slash rock world. Everything that Steely Dan accomplished in terms of bringing... A, their particular, not just any jazz vibe, but their particular jazz vibe into the world of pop and rock. I always use the comparison, but that to me, is the closest uh, comparison I can get is what Michael Franks did in the jazz world was very, very similar to the Steely Dan in this sense, that his material that he's writing, just like uh, Walter Becker and uh, Donald Fagan of Steely Dan, is very intelligent, it's very well thought out lyrically, it's very artful lyrically, it's very clever. The music is very harmonic and rich. They use big chords and sophisticated musical concepts. It's not just cookie cutter music, okay? And uh, there's a lot of exploration, there's a lot of space, there's a ton of improvisation in these charts that uh, Michael Franks has had throughout his career, just like in the Steely Dan, they always leave room for the solos and the improvisation. And of course, the obvious common element is that both Steely Dan and Michael Franks made extensive use of the absolute cream of the crop session players. So Michael Franks and Joe Sample already have quite an illustrious history, okay, based on the work that Joe Sample did as a guest keyboardist on several Michael Frank's albums, okay? So 13 years after 
that that Michael Frank's record with Sample on it, 13 years later, they've got quite a history. And here they are now with the Joe Sample uh, solo album. And Michael Frank's, Michael Frank's is going to make a guest appearance on this Joe Sample record. So from 1989, this is the Joe Sample Spellbound album, and this is a song written by both of them, a collaboration written by Michael Franks and Joe Sample. This is a song called Leading Me Back to You. And oh my goodness, check out these two guys. You want to talk about synergy and chemistry? Listen to these two. <laughs> just sitting here listening to this track and it's just so funky and this bass player is just killing it and Michael Franks is just floating across the top of that and you can hear Joe Sample's key rhythm keyboard over here on the left channel and he's just he's just so tasty and everything it's everything he plays is so just it's big, but it's small, and he fits it in there, and it's just, ah, oh, it's so tasty. Joe Sample, and then Michael Franks and his vocals. God, now, I got to tell you, coming up here, listen to this piano. This is Joe Sample on the solo in the middle. Listen to this song. This is ridiculous. <laughs>
You know what? I will bet if we were a fly on the wall in the studio, I'll bet this song came together for them like that. They showed up in the studio. Hey, how you doing? Good. Well, let's do this. Okay. Boom. I will bet that it was almost effortless because their, their styles are just so complementary. They're very different. Uh, styles individually when you listen to Joe Sample whether he was with the Crusaders or on his own but you put Joe Sample in that context against those vocals and where they can play off of each other like that and oh my god there's so much soul in that and that bass player that bass lick was just killing me uh this is a song that uh, it knocked me out back then in 1989. I, like I said, I already loved both of these artists. And uh, to me, this is just one of the very best uh, things that either of them ever did. And that's saying something because both of these guys have catalogs that are just so full of incredible material. The great Joe Sample, the late great Joe Sample, man, uh, what an artist he was for so many years on so many big hit records. What a player. The most tasteful keyboard player you'll ever hear. And Michael Franks, and you want to know how much I love Michael Franks? I always say that if I had to be a solo artist, if I was going to be a one-man show, or not a one-man show, but, you know, a single artist, um, guess what? I wish I could be Michael Franks because there is something, first of all, musically, it's even, like I said, the Steely Dan thing. You think I'm joking. I'm not joking. He's right there musically. So, so rich and so diverse and so intelligent and so well put together and so well thought out. Like I said, with the lyrics, his vocals, the whole thing. But there's also, there's a there's a romantic element of uh, Michael Franks. That there's a humorous element. There's, it's like I'm checking off all these boxes of, you know, aspects of my personality that his music addresses in such a unique and powerful way, unlike anyone else's music. That's why I, I take it so personally. And uh, there's a spiritual element to it and his, his ability to observe and, and, and uh, share insights in sometimes humorous ways through his lyrics. I mean, it just goes on and on. Michael Franks, what a deep artist. Coming back with the next one and it's time to get in the 70s. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play some stuff that you know and love. I'm going to play some stuff you don't know, but you will love all of it. You'll see. Coming right up. And beep, 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 beep. We are out. Beep, beep, beep. Beep. 